Um, my name is Jennifer Ulix. I'm the Student Activities Director. Welcome to the final student of the month. Most of the uh, students in our audience today are seniors. We do have a couple exceptions out there, um, but this makes this um, ceremony especially um, wonderful to celebrate with um, people who are leaving us, including our principal who's retiring. So this is her final, 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 final student of the month. Um, so we appreciate you being here with us today. Thank you teachers for taking the time to recognize these students and we're gonna find out in just a minute why you were selected and why we're honoring you today. Parents and family, thank you so much for being here to celebrate your students and your family members. Um, Wildcat Productions is filming in the back, so um, students, when you um, come up here, please stand next to the podium so that we can get you in the frame of the camera. Um, thank you to Joseph and Michelle, who will be taking your picture after the presentation, and um, Kelly DeBruler for all of the behind the scenes that she does for us. Thank you. And Jack is standing over by the door. He is the owner of Domino's Pizza in Libertyville, and he is the, the sponsor of our ceremony. He sends all of our students home with a certificate for a large, or ex extra large, extra large. Yeah, <laughs> one topping pizza, um, compliments of Domino's, so thank you, Jack, for doing that for the students. And just to let you know, in that envelope is, um, it's a business card that actually So that is the certificate, so that's what you'll redeem for, um, for your pizza, so make sure you do that. And of course, thank you to Dr. Scott, who has been so supportive of not only student of the month, but all of our students here at LHS, we will miss you so much. And um, I don't want to go on too much because I'll cry, but this is our... This is a, the whole retirement dinner, so we can't cry. Right, last night we did. So um, without further ado, um, I will have Dr. Scott, Dr. Scott get us started today. So come on up. It is an exciting day um, being our last student of the month and Mrs. Ulix and I have had an awesome day today too because we've spent almost the entire day with students. That's what makes the day great. And actually you're going to see a group come through here because we had two things happening at one time. We're sending off our math team to state so you're going to have to help us do that throughout the ceremony too and you'll see what we do with uh, students and teams that get sent off to state. We had no other choice because we couldn't cut ourselves in half. So without further ado, we're going to get started here. And I want to say to you, thank you for coming. It's nice to have such a filled room here. And it just, it just epitomizes what makes LHS so great. It's great teachers, great students, and the support of families from home. And that combination together is so powerful. This is a powerful ceremony because you'll be able to hear firsthand and personal from teachers some things about your child maybe you didn't know. Maybe they don't act the same at home as they do at school. <laughs> you never know. Uh, so we're going to start with Mr. Thomas. He has a double this, uh, this afternoon. We usually don't allow that to happen, but we're going to allow it today. Okay? See, I'm getting soft as I get close to retirement. So do you want to do them separately or both together? Okay, so we have Lewis Cherry then first, okay? So come on up here, Lewis. Good afternoon, everybody. So one of my uh, joys in teaching here at Libertyville High School is being able to teach speech to mostly upperclassmen. And uh, I uh, usually have students who enroll in the class with a mixture of abilities, a majority of whom, when they start the class, are shaking, they're nervous, public speaking is not their thing, they're enrolled in the class in order to learn the skills. Their first day of class, I assign a speech, and then the next day they have to come in and deliver that speech. And they're shaking, they're nervous. And then Lewis came <laughs> and started speaking. And uh, Lewis just kind of floored the class on the first day in terms of uh, his ability to set a benchmark. And he has continued to do that. Uh, speech after speech, and not even just in his speeches, but in his other work in the class as well. And just to show you one reason why, if you don't know Lewis, I'm going to have him introduce himself to you all in just a quick, short, brief introduction. I put him on the spot right here, so he's just going to introduce himself to everybody using his great speech skills. Yeah, my name is Lewis Cherry. Uh, next year, I will be attending Indiana University of Bloomington to study speech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And the main reason I wanted him to talk for a second is because you could just hear there's something different about Lewis, <laughs> and then he's got that British accent, and we were talking about that earlier at the table. Um, we Americans are so enamored with these British accents, <laughs> and so I have students in the class that just kind of ogle Lewis, like, talk more, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, is that his accent is great, but his skills and his ability to perform in front of a group of people are even greater. So it's not the accent that wins him uh, the Student of the Month today. Uh, it's what he uh, uses his accent, actually his accent for. He knows it's interesting. <laughs> so he makes it so that way, uh, rather than trying to pretend it's not there, he uses it and not only with his own vocabulary, but also his just uh, way of being in front of an audience. I wrote here in the pamphlet, pamphlet today um, just beyond his skills themselves, a little bit about Lewis as a person. And I said, furthermore, as he continues to achieve such success in the classroom, he remains humble and gracious among his classmates, all of whom are fascinated by his appealing accent, but students want to achieve more because of Lewis's example. So next year, Lewis plans on going to IU Kelly School of Business. And I know from talking to other business, people who work in the business world as well that uh, those who can communicate well succeed. And so therefore, because Lewis has so many other skills, you're going to be cheering him with the math team in a little bit as well. Uh, it's not just his intelligence and his personality, but also his ability to communicate those things to others that are going to surely achieve him success in the future. So just meeting him this fall or this winter, I've only known him for a semester, uh, and getting to know him over the course of the semester has really been a joy for me. And uh, I'm glad that I was able to have you in class. Thanks, Lewis. Thank you. Allison, if she could come up next. So I'm not really double dipping <laughs> because I do work in, as like two different departments. I'm uh, obviously part of the English department and teaching speech, but I also teach and I'm in charge of our theater program here at LHS as well. So uh, the special thing about Allison is that while I just met Lewis this winter, is I've known Allison since her freshman year, first semester here at LHS, and she has taken one of my acting classes every single year since. She's the only student of her class that can say that. So it's fitting that, of course, I would nominate Allison <laughs> for Student of the Month. Uh, and I was surprised, honestly, that up to this point she had not been nominated because not only does she succeed in the arts and in my classes, but she succeeds, I know from talking to other teachers, in so many other disciplines. So many of the students out here I know I've had in class as well and know that they do too. But Allison specifically for me is just a special student, not only because of the time that we've shared together, but in that time we've had lots of different memories <laughs> and lots of different and myriad experiences as well. Uh, Allison's again, her personality and the way that she treats other students, the way that she uh, not only approaches uh, her own work independently, but approaches group work in terms of trying to achieve more uh, because she's part of something bigger than herself uh, is quite extraordinary. Most recently, we did a spring musical, which is not traditional for us. We usually do a spring play. And uh, we were in a bit of a conundrum because our typical, chore typical choreographer couldn't work with us. So as we were speaking, she said, well, what do you think about a student choreographer? And the first person we both said out loud was Allison Nelson. Uh, and Allison uh, has uh, a variety of different experiences from her past to be able to bring to that, but mostly it's who she is, is the reason why we chose her to be our student choreographer. And she did pretty well. <laughs> if you saw the show, you know I'm understating that. Uh, but one of the highest compliments I can pay is not just a compliment from a teacher that sees the potential and the awesomeness of the student, but when that student is also able to command that from her peers as well. And when your peers are able to recognize just what a great leader you are and the respect that it has to take in order to take direction from and be able to command not only a rehearsal, but an entire production process as well. So from your peers and from me, Allison Nelson is Student of the Month.
lifetime experience. <laughs> and I think if uh, I was a high school student, I would take your class every year, too. <laughs> Next, we have Mr. Gerlach, and he's introducing Cameron. I'm Mr. Gerlach. Um, I teach in the Applied Technology uh, oh my God. <coughs> classroom, I guess, at this point. I like, can't think of the word. Um, as I still get nervous speaking in front of adults, kids, totally fine. Um, but for whatever reason, obviously I'm struggling today. Um, I want to introduce Cam. Cam is in my Graphics 2 class at this point in time. And talking with Cam when we first came in, I did realize something. Cam started out in my class last semester and talked to nobody. Um, and it's not a bad thing, quite honestly, because that's how Cam got work done, which was great for her. And she was totally into her music and paying attention, obviously, when she had to. And now this semester, it's been great because I got to see her actually come out of her shell a little bit. So somebody actually stole the seat next to her because it used to be her personal bubble seat. But now her bubble seat's gone. and. She now sits next to Sarah, um, and they talk every day, and they giggle, and they have a good time. So it's nice to see kids who can do both things and interact with others. Um, she's in a very diverse class, we'll call it. Um, there's a lot of strange people, possibly, in there. Um, I'll, I'll give it that. It's a, to be nice, I guess, about it. Um, so it, it is different. but. At this point in time, Cam has been so great this semester. Some of the things that she has done in Graphics 2 are extreme. I know she'll come in every single day, uh, ready to talk to Sarah this semester, which is great. But <laughs> she works hard every day. Even on the days when Sarah's not there, I know Cam will be doing the work um, and phenomenal work at that. So I do want to say it's been a pleasure having Cam this entire year. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to know you until this year, but it's been wonderful. Um, and then Cam actually has, she finished her banner today um, in graphics too, so she had it on the table, so we figured we'd hold it up at least so you can see what she did. Um, and it dates, it dates back music that I enjoy, which is awesome. Um, and we've been able to talk about music a lot this year, which has been been great. So I really enjoyed Cam, and that's why I nominated Cam as Student of the Month. for bringing your work. That's so cool to see. Next we have Mrs. Gourley and she's introducing Sage. Well, I'm Sarah Gourley and I teach in the math department. Sage is a student of mine in AP Statistics and I know that there are certain rules about teachers which according to the public don't ever happen. Like teachers don't talk to other teachers about students because you know we aren't actually real people we just exist during the school day from the beginning of the day to the end we don't go to the grocery store so when people see me in the ice cream aisle of jewel it's not me really it's not because i don't no but but in all in all honesty at the beginning of the year you you find your roster you learn who's going to be in your class and then you talk to your friends and my friends happen to be other teachers and i have this neighbor Mrs. Warfield, some of you might know about her. She came into my room. She said, I want to see who's in your class. Who do I know? And I said, well, here's my list. And she said, oh, you have Sage. That's wonderful. He's the sweetest. I have to tell you, I have all these stories about Sage. And you know, I trust her. I trust her instinct. I figure, well, she's probably right. And then I have had the chance to end my day every day this year with Sage, because he's in my eighth period class. And so to be able to know I've got that smile coming my way and I get to be able to share in that joy, it's been fantastic. 
He's someone who is always curious, always wanting to know more. He actually is planning on doing some more studies of statistics since we've met, which I think is really cool. Um, and he's one of those students who you just know is going to put in his effort all the time. Always a positive attitude, and he's been a real pleasure to get to know. So thank you and best wishes in the future. And next we have Mrs. Castro and she will be introducing Michael. Hola. <laughs> um, so I teach Spanish and this year I had the pleasure of teaching Michael in Spanish for Honors. And I wish I could have had Michael in Spanish one, in Spanish two, in Spanish three honors, because it has just been a real pleasure. Um, and he just comes in every day with a positive mindset, and it is just great to work with him. And in Spanish, you know, we talk, we talk, and we talk, and we talk, and we talk. And I try to talk a little bit less than my students, but we talk a lot. And he always works so well with his partners, trying to bring out the best in them and add to the conversation and always push it further. And he always has such interesting insights to share. Um, and, you know, as we've gone through the year, um, I'm kind of an I'm armchair scientist. I like to listen to things like Radio Lab, and, you know, they'll be trying to study their, like, AP physics notes or their science notes or their math in my class, and I always chime in and ask them questions. And I, you know, I've been talking to Michael and his studies in science and human physio. Um, and, you know, being a Spanish teacher, when I look out at the faces of my students, I always see them in 10 years and what they're going to do. And, um, you know, I just think about how they're going to help people and how they're going to make connections and reach out and just go forth in the world. And when I have somebody like Michael in class, I just know that, you know, in general, he's going to do great things and really help people. And hopefully, you know, he's so talented in Spanish, I think maybe, you know, he'll be one of those people where, you know, Spanish is also added onto that. And I, I have students who, you know, in the day, they say, oh my gosh, I had a conversation with somebody at Jewel, or I had a conversation with somebody, you know, who needed help at the library, and it's so nice to hear. And I really think that, you know, hopefully someday I'll hear Michael come back and let me know how just his studies in general, and hopefully in my Spanish heart, his um, <laughs> studies in language uh, will go will will help people in the end because I know that Michael will definitely make a positive impact in this world and I'm really lucky to know you and have you as a student this year. did get some affirmation up here. He's going to do something with the Spanish, too. Okay, and now I see coming into the room our championship caliber math team. If we could give them all a round of applause. We, they're, they're all looking at us like, we don't usually do it this way, Dr. Scott. <laughs> But you know, you never want to take anything for granted, but I have to say I do count on sending off the math team every year because they've been so successful. I'm hoping this year to have another championship march to celebrate. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> the, first, uh, the first year we sent these guys off with these pencils, we usually send them off with goodie bags of food. And for some reason, our cafeteria manager was absent that day. And Mrs. Ulix and I thought, what are we going to do? And she pulled these pencils out of her back pocket. And they are now the lucky, the lucky pencils. So go forth with your lucky pencils. Do your best. 
Who is your stiffest competition and when do you guys first compete? Great. Can we all give them a round of applause and say good luck? We're going to take their picture, and I don't know if um, Mrs. Jones can take their picture and look for them on State Street in the hall. Did everybody get a pencil? Hi, Thank you for helping us out with that. Next, we have Mrs. Price, and she's introducing Johnny. Hello. I am lucky enough to have Johnny in my English class this year, and I'm lucky that I have known him for four years. So this time, I'm reading to you what I wrote, because I don't want to forget anything. Um, a strong work ethic, positive thinking, and an accepting attitude are good reasons why Johnny is Student of the Month. I have known Johnny since his freshman year. In the past, he, was, he wasn't quite as ambitious or determined as he is now. He evolved over the last four years, and he is definitely headed in the right direction. He set standards higher for himself this year and has consistently reached his goals. Academics are a priority for him and other students like him. Yes, he is nice, he is fun to be around, but in addition, he is accepting of everyone's differences. He supports and celebrates the successes of others, which is greatly appreciated. In addition, even though Johnny has been quiet, he has come up with problem-solving ideas and respectfully contributes those in class on behalf of the other students. This type of behavior indicates a flair of leadership, which he is just discovering. I appreciate the way he speaks up and takes on problems in a courteous and well-mannered way. He sets a positive example with respectful and appropriate negotiation for other students who are struggling. While there are other distractions that prevent some students from focusing and dedicating themselves to school, Johnny remains focused and motivated. Homework is consistently completed. He arrives prepared, ready to learn every day. He appreciates that he is blessed with a strong family and cherishes them. Clearly, Johnny reflects the values he is being taught in his family and here at LHS. Overall, the hard work I see every day, the kindness he exhibits toward others, and the positive example he sets for fellow students is highly commendable. Johnny certainly displays the high standards of Student of the Month. Congratulations. And we have Mrs. Angelos next, and she's introducing Jennifer. We all love Jenny. Yeah, come on up. And Julie's here. Come on up. Come on, stand next to me. Get in the picture. Our social worker wanted to come, the other counselor, the other ESP, actually everyone wanted to come, but we couldn't shut down the LSD because a lot of people are leaving Friday afternoon. So I did have to write what I was going to say because um, I thought I may get emotional. 
Um, Jenny's a senior that um, is really special to our LST, which um, over the four years has had, I don't know, thousands of students go through it. And if you were to ask any one of us, a student that um, is the most genuine, kind student, we'd all say, Jenny, <laughs> right away. So I adore Jennifer Avalos. I can't say it enough. She is special. Jenny was blessed with love and compassion in her heart and soul, but thankfully she acts on it. I can visualize Jenny right now, her freshman year in the LST, spending hours during her own lunch period thoughtfully writing and decorating cards for sick children at Lurie's Children's Hospital. That year, our student council thought that we'd have a school-wide event and we would send tons of cards to Lurie's. I think they received 11 and Jenny wrote nine of them. And her tender words had even moved Julie, to tears, and each time she turned them in, we all read them. I'm sorry, I didn't know if they were private, <laughs> but we did, and, <laughs> and they were unbelievable. I mean, so thoughtful in her care to be respectful, and as a 14-year-old, we knew that we had a good one. She takes any opportunity that she can to help others, and she does not do it for the accolades at all. As a matter of fact, she's a very private person, and this recognition is probably a bit uncomfortable <laughs> for her, but overdue um, her senior year. So I won't go into too much detail about one of the next things that um, has moved me about her, but um, <laughs> Jenny has an elderly neighbor that she recognized didn't have anyone to care for her. And she does things that a teenager would never even think to do for this person that has really changed her life. And this woman is eternally grateful to her. And um, it's something I've actually never heard of a young person doing. So it's something that I will respect and remember about you for life because it's really overwhelming. Um, in high school, <laughs> you've done Wish and Leaf, and you've been a student ambassador, and you've helped others, and you've done so many things, but that, uh, that role that you play for your, your friend is overwhelming, and it's amazing. And I will miss you so much. <laughs> I will. I will miss you so much. Um, and I'm really proud of you that last year when I brought up the Camp College, and I said, do you want to go across the state? I've never sent anyone. You won't know anybody, but you'll learn about what college is all about. And you said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you went, and you made lifelong friends there, and you learned a lot, and you're going to do great things in college, and I'm so very proud of you. So to end, I put like Plato, I do believe that happiness springs from doing good things for others. And I know that you're going to go through life continuing to help others. And I sincerely hope that that continues to bring you happiness because you deserve it. You're an amazing young woman, and I'm better for knowing you. Yeah. Always, there's always so many special moments here. Next we have Mr. Schur, and he's introducing Dylan. So uh, first I need to say congratulations to all the recipients today. So many great young adults in the room. I've had the pleasure of having both Sage and Lewis in class right now. I was not surprised when I saw your guys' names in the booklet. And uh, being, 
excuse me, being a baseball guy, you never want to walk up after the guy that just hit a home run, right? <laughs> so, Dylan, we're going to do our best here, buddy. All right. So we're crying for you. All right, you ready? Here we go. Let's do it. Huh. Um, this kind of says a lot of it right here. And I will just tell you, he is a cross the T's, dot the I's kind of guy. Um, our weight room, first of all, in, in weight training or in physical education, our weight training class is the class I say on day one, you better have signed up for this class because you want to work out every single day. It is not the default PE class. You're going to get after it. And some kids by default get thrown in there because their schedule just didn't jive any other way. And we do our best, obviously, to find the motivation to, uh, to get them to embrace the weight room. Um, one of the greatest things a teacher can have in any discipline is to have those that help with peer instruction in, when they're not even asked to. And in the weight room, the layout of the landscape is an L-shaped room. So kind of the fulcrum of the room is right where the teacher's desk is at, and I could have students to my left and to my right. So we kind of meander around that corner a little bit so we can see everything. And I tend to take the kids who have been in class in the past and put them farther away and the kids that need a little bit more hands-on closest to that elbow of the room. And, and Dylan certainly is, is not one that needs a whole lot of help. But what he has done on more than one semester is come to this end of the room and help those kids that need a lot of help. And he has been an asset to me in class. Dylan is a, is a great, has got a great internal motor. He's a true self-starter. And like so many echoes uh, of sentiments that have been said today, uh, he makes everyone else around him better because of what he does in his approach. Um, I can't say enough of good things about him. I wish him the best in all of his endeavors down the road. It's been a pleasure to have him in class. Thank you, Dylan. forget the pizza. And I'd like to bring up Mr. Busing with Skyler. I had the pleasure of being in Mrs. Ulick's office when she told Skyler he was a winner. And this isn't the first time he's been up here. Did you know that? I, I knew he had been nominated for awesome. one once before. My name is Mark Busing. I go by Mr. Mark. Um, and I just want to say before we start with Skylar that six of the people in the room have taken physics. So it might just be that the secret ingredient in student of the month is physics. So if you have younger siblings, encourage them to take physics. It might work out. Uh, but Skylar is a terrific student. He competes at the top levels in football, in hockey, and in track and field. So that's three sports each year. Um, it requires a lot of time outside the classroom, before school, after school. Um, if you're a hockey parent or a hockey player, you know that ice time comes at very odd hours. And that makes school difficult and might require some sacrifice to have those kind of experiences. Um, Skylar never makes excuses. Um, he gets his work done. He puts academics above athletics. Um, even with all that time outside the classroom. In fact, on the last couple exams, his scores have put him very near the top of all 200 students. Um, it's, it's remarkable. Um, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise, though, because he is going on to a little place called Carnegie Mellon. Maybe you've heard of it next year to play football. So academics definitely come first, and, and I appreciate that. The other thing that uh, I didn't put in the write-up, but I wanted to mention here personally was that we have a student in his class that that struggles a bit. Um, life is hard, but it's harder for some people. And I think you can tell a lot about someone's character by how they treat the most vulnerable people. And I can assure his parents that he has outstanding character. That, uh, yeah, he takes care of people and, and appreciate that as well. So for those reasons and for having an obvious knack for math and science in my class, Skylar, Student of the Month. You 
you know, Skylar, some of what Mr. Mark was saying, it reminded me of the trip to Spain, too, and that group of 60 students, and very few guys in that group. And I know if you were with the group of guys, I can, could count on them to behave a little differently than they usually did. Just by that quiet presence, not probably anything you really even had to say. Uh, next, we have Mr. Marino, and he's introducing Andy. Hi, I'm Jeremy Marino, and uh, I'm the orchestra director. Uh, we just had a, a concert uh, this past Tuesday, and I'd be remiss not to remind you that we have a centennial concert <laughs> celebrating 100 years of LHS uh, coming on May 18th that features the top band, orchestra, and choir playing 1812 Overture and a whole bunch of other great stuff. So uh, there you go, advertisement <laughs> over. Um, but we just had a, a concert with the freshman orchestra. Andy's a, a, a freshman, and... Um, and I just, I, as I was conducting the group, I was just thinking, it's like, man, this, these kids are so, they follow so well, they listen, they, they are, they're, you know, you give them these like, musical ideas and they're just, they, tr they were trying so much. And we've, it wasn't just that moment, we've had many, I've had many of those moments kind of just working with them in rehearsal. And it's striking because they're freshmen and that's not something that's kind of easy to pick up at that uh, stage at, you know, kind of more advanced levels. And I just kind of was thinking about like, you know, why was this happening? Why is this kind of group? And a lot has to do with uh, some of the student leaders who are in that group because um, it's such a mixture of talents, uh, from, you know, that one grade, but everyone's coming from their different backgrounds of ability. And having students like Andy who really kind of commit to something that you tell them to do um, is so, so helpful. Um, and you know, this, and he's, he's a kind of a quiet guy, a uh, real quiet guy. Uh, so if you just kind of saw him just kind of interacting, you wouldn't think, oh, like that's, that's the leader. But when he's playing, uh, you know, and you say, hey, can you guys do X? You know, a lot of kids, they hear the word X. Actually, they might not hear the word X. They just hear like, you know, the Charlie Brown teacher in the background. <laughs> um, but he picks it up and it immediately becomes this thing that he's focusing on and attempting to do with everything he has that next time. And I always tell the kids, you know, everything that you do, uh, you're practicing. Whether that's kind of being focused and, you know, working on this, this particular bow, uh, or if it's just kind of not paying attention. Like, you are practicing not paying attention or not doing that. And Andy is a guy who is always kind of like giving what he can all the time. And that's really hard. <laughs> you know, just trying to teach, like, at that level, at all, it's really, really hard. And I, it's super impressive to see that, especially at the freshman level. And, but that's kind of a descriptor for uh, Andy and why he's my student of the month. It's super impressive. And thank you very much. And I'd like to invite up Mrs. Gavin, and she's introducing Samantha. Hi, everyone. Um, I have been Sam's Spanish teacher, so hola a todos, uh, for the last two years. And I would like to echo, echo what um, Mr. Thomas said about his student. I was really surprised that Sam had not been nominated yet. But here it is last chance and you got it and you so very much deserve it um i've had you in first hour so first hour and you know the energy of the class can sometimes be a little sleepy but that's never been the case with sam um nor her classmates in general um we are a really great first hour this year and i would dare say that sam is one of the strongest students in that group you are always uh, ready to work, you are always kind, you are always gracious, you are always prepared. It has been a true pleasure watching you grow as a young woman, as well as, you know, your academic skills, but like as your personality and you, you already were mature, but like you are becoming more and more of an adult and it's a privilege and a pleasure to see that. Um, I've had Sam's younger brother, or I'm sorry, older brother, <laughs> and I've also uh, 
hung out with Sam's mom on a field trip, so I feel like I've really gotten a chance to <laughs> know the Ross family, and you should be very proud of your daughter. Um, we're talking about, you know, the last chapter in our vocab is jobs in the future, and you're going to be going into occupational therapy, and I think you're going to do very well in that field. And I really do hope, like Mrs. Castro said, that uh, with Michael continuing his Spanish, and that you get a chance to continue your Spanish as well, because you are really good at it. I think you're good at a lot of things. So, <laughs> thank you. Next is uh, Ms. Tars, as she's so affectionately known, with Sydney. So this is pretty much how a normal, average, everyday thing goes for us. Tars, Tars, I have to tell you something. What? 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 I got five on my AP Chem test. Woo! Just kidding. No, I didn't. Oh. I just, <laughs> But something like that, every single day, or in between classes, or you know, right before class, or at the end of the day, this is how we are. And so, you know, I've known Sydney pretty much since she was an eighth grader. I met her at her little sister's birthday party. Uh, my daughter was there, and so over time we have gotten to know each other. I had Sydney as a student in sophomore year, her sophomore year, and I had her now in um, her senior year to, as well. So. She, the, the greatest thing about Sydney is that she is dedicated, responsible. She is a light of the classroom. We have kind of a party atmosphere in our classroom. You know, and I don't know how good that is or how bad that is, but it's, it's very, very nice. So we have a really great time and Sydney's always the responsible one. She's always the one who's like, hey, can we quiet it down? Or can we go ahead and do, keep going? No, no, that's great. It's, no, no. <laughs> No, we all have a really, really fine time in class, and it's in Sydney's demeanor and her um, just her sheer presence is really a joy, and I've been that lucky um, to have her not just once but twice in class. So thank you very much. And it was worth the wait. We found Mrs. Owens. If you could come up here and introduce um, Emily, right? Yes. Great. <laughs> All right, I have to bring the mic down a little bit. So um, this is Emily. I have nom nominated Emily Sanderson for the Student of the Month, which um, is a way to end her high school career going out with a bang and I was informed by Emily that actually her freshman year, I think the first month of high school, she was also nominated for the student of the month. So she yeah, book ended with um, just phenomenal performance and attitude in class. And I'm nervous so I'm actually going to read what I wrote and then I'll kind of embellish it. So um, I have Emily in my fifth period human physiology class and she just right out of the gate day one showed a tremendous amount of effort and really passion for the subject. I can tell she really, really loves the material. She comes to class with a great attitude every day, wanting to learn. She asks lots of questions. Anytime I put forth a question to the class, she's always active in volunteering and she'll even stay after sometimes to talk more about the subject and her interest in it. She really is an asset to her lab group and her partners. She's um, just a really solid performer, and I know she really kind of pulls them together and helps keep them on task. And you know, ever since spring break, second semester, senior year, it is really tough for kids to stay focused, but it has, it has not been tough for Emily. She really is a leader in the class. I can always count on her to get everything in and give 100% effort. Um, I'm just really impressed with Emily's initiative 
and desire to be successful, not just in human physiology, but really in all of her classes. She just shows a lot of drive and I'm just really proud of her and lucky to have had her in my class. Um, and just to throw out, a, and I'm talking a lot about just her personality and how great she is, but on every single test this year, she has scored well above the class average and earned an A on every test. So that just is a testament to her dedication and drive and um, motivation in class. So thank you, Emily, for um, helping me end my year with a bang as well. And I feel really honored to have you in my class. So. Thank you all for coming and celebrating our students' great success with us. Hopefully you leave with the pride we're all feeling in our heart for them today.